Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you and welcome to a very special session of the Doha Debates sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. As you can see, we've left behind our regular venue in the Gulf and we're here in Britain as guests of the Oxford Union, the most famous debating chamber in the world and the inspiration for the Doha Debates. The Union has a proud record of hosting controversial figures and discussing sensitive subjects. Malcolm X spoke here, so did Yasser Arafat and Richard Nixon. Former British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan called the Union the last bastion of free speech in the Western world. And for that and many other reasons, we're delighted to be here. Our debate tonight is also concerned with free speech, especially as it relates to criticism of the State of Israel. How far do Israel's friends go in seeking to protect its reputation? Why did former President Jimmy Carter claim it was now impossible to have a rational debate about Israel in the United States? Well, our motion reads, this House believes the pro-Israel lobby has successfully stifled Western debate about Israel's actions. And we have a panel well equipped to debate it. Speaking for the motion, Norman Finkelstein. He's a professor of political science, now teaching at DePaul University in Chicago. He's the son of Jewish Holocaust survivors and is well known for writing critically about Israel. He's been at the center of numerous heated academic and political disputes. Also for the motion, Andrew Coburn, an Irish journalist based in the United States for many years. He's written frequently about the Middle East and in the 1990s co-authored a book entitled Dangerous Liaison, the inside story of the US-Israeli covert relationship. Against the motion, Martin Indig, who knows the pro-Israel lobby from the inside. He's a former deputy research director for the main lobby group, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, or APAC, and has served twice as US ambassador to Israel. He's now director of the Saban Center for Middle East Policy at the Brookings Institution. And with him, David Aronovich, regular columnist for The Times. He's a former president of the National Union of Students and a frequent broadcaster. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. So now let me please ask Norman Finkelstein to speak for the motion. Thank you. Uh, I've devoted most of my adult life, a large part of it, to studying the Israel-Palestine conflict. And the most striking thing, when you look at the actual record on the conflict, the historical record, the human rights record, the diplomatic record, the most striking thing is when you look at the actual record, how little controversy, how little dispute, how little disagreement there is among the experts and authorities. Yet, when you enter the arena of public debate, public discussion, the media, all of a sudden, the Israel-Palestine conflict becomes so controversial. It's as if Nobody agrees on anything. And it's my view that the vast preponderance of this alleged controversy is fabricated. It's conjured up. It's contrived by the pro-Israel lobby in order to sow confusion, deflect attention from, and stifle discussion about the actual record which is so damning of Israel. The main means used are, first of all, to mystify the conflict, to claim that it's so complicated that it requires a knowledge the equivalent of rocket science to penetrate its mysteries. Secondly, the dragging in of extraneous issues, like the so-called new anti-Semitism, and finally, the vast proliferation of misinformation, disinformation, and sheer fraud, which masquerades as scholarship and which is then validated and even acclaimed by the mainstream media. That's the problem. Norman Finkelstein, thank you very much indeed. Who has ever managed to stifle you? We look at you, there's a plethora of books out there, The Rise and Fall of Palestine, The Holocaust Industry, Reflections on the Exploitation of Jewish Suffering Beyond Chutzpah. You're living proof that the debate hasn't been stifled at all, aren't you? 
Well, I hate to personalize these things because they have only anecdotal value. But if you want to look at the record, you say, I have many books to my name. That's accurate. And your views are out there. That's inaccurate. I have, never been, I have never been on television in the United States. I have never been on mainstream, made, me, uh, mainstream radio in the United States. I am now 53 years old. I have my doctoral degree from Princeton. I have a list of publications. You're still I'm teaching